Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is the Jensen Twin Servo Microphone Preamp, as produced by the John Hardy Company. Actually, this particular unit has four microphone preamplifiers in one box. But the thing I wanted to point out is that each preamplifier has not one, but two 990 discrete operational amplifiers. So why might they be using two amplifiers instead of just one amplifier? Well, there's actually lots of reasons you might want to do that, but in this lecture, I'll talk about an important one in particular. So in the last lecture, we talked about operational amplifiers with non-ideal gain, and we modeled the transfer function of the amplifier using a simple one-pole low-pass filter function. So A0 is the DC gain, and omega naught is the corner frequency, the half-power cutoff point. People will also call that the minus 3 dB point. In his notes, Marshall Leach usually writes the function like this. I often like to multiply the numerator and the denominator by omega naught to write it like this. And if you substitute J omega in for S, that gives you the frequency response where omega is a variable in units of radians per second. We define something called the gain bandwidth product. And usually you want to actually represent this in terms of hertz. So you could divide both sides of this expression by 2 pi and write something like fx equals a naught times f0, where the f variables now represent frequencies in hertz. And I should mention that we're assuming that the inputs here have an ideal input impedance of infinity, so there's no current flowing through here. And the output of the op amp is a perfect voltage source, so it has an output impedance of zero. We studied the effect of this non-ideal frequency response on the non-inverting configuration and found that it gave us the form of a low-pass one-pole filter where we can choose the parameters associated with the filter by choosing the amount of feedback being applied that I'm referring to here as K according to a voltage divider defined by choosing R1 and RF. The DC gain is given by A0 over K times A0 plus 1. And notice that if A0 is very large, this is approximately 1 over K. So that's the kind of result you get in your sophomore circuits class if you assume you have infinite gain across the entire spectrum so that VI at the positive terminal becomes copied at the negative terminal. The corner frequency is the original corner frequency of the op amp times K A0 plus 1. So essentially what we've done is we've taken a pole sitting here at minus omega naught and we've managed to shove it out to the left. So let me extend my axis here, and we are sending the pole out this way somewhere to land out here somewhere. Now suppose I were to cascade two of these stages. Well, the transfer function for that, that I'm calling a sub 2, would be just the transfer function for one of the stages squared. So let me take that transfer function and square it. And I should mention that although I'm doing this analysis in terms of operational amplifiers set up in non-inverting configurations, the kind of analysis that I'm going to do after this applies to whatever kind of amplifier stages you might have, as long as you can characterize them with this transfer function according to a DC gain and a corner frequency. So let me plug in J omega for S to get the frequency response and look at the magnitude squared. So I'm going to ask a particular question. What particular value of omega is going to give me half of the power at DC? So that's three decibels down, so I'm going to call that omega sub 3 dB. So you could think of omega naught F as being the omega 3 dB of one stage. So let me plug in our actual formulas for what's on the left and what's on the right. So here on the left, I've plugged in omega 3 dB for omega. And on the right, when I plug in 0 for omega, this whole denominator goes away. And I just wind up with a naught f to the fourth divided by 2. And now to handle what's on the left, remember that if you have something that's magnitude squared, 
that's equivalent to taking that thing and multiplying it by its complex conjugate. So if I think about what the complex conjugate of this expression is, all I would need to do to take the complex conjugate is replace this plus sign with a minus sign. So if I think about multiplying those kinds of terms together, the cross terms cancel, and I wind up with all of this mess here squared. And since I had a plus and a minus term, those multiplied together, I would get a minus. But I also have a j times a j, which gives me a minus one when I multiply those, so those cancel, and I wind up with a plus here. If you want, you can grab a pencil and a piece of paper and work that out to convince yourself of that. Okay, let's see. On the left, I would have a naught f to the power of 4. So that would cancel with the a naught f to the 4 on the right. Then I can take the reciprocal, and then I can take a square root. So all of the stuff in the denominators winds up on the top. And when I take the square root, this power of 2 goes away, and I wind up with a square root on the right. All right, from there, I could take this 1 and move it over to the other side. So I have square root of 2 minus 1 on the right. And then I can take square root of that whole thing and then just multiply both sides of the expression by omega naught f. So that will give me my 3 dB frequency. And usually we want to think about these things in terms of hertz. So let me imagine dividing both sides by 2 pi to write everything in terms of f representing these quantities in hertz. So let's do a couple of examples using the 741 op amp. Suppose I want the gain at DC to be 100. Well, I could use a single 741 and choose my resistors to get a closed loop DC gain of 100. Or I could cascade two 741s where I set the resistors so that each amplifier stage gives me a closed loop gain of just 10, since 10 times 10 equals 100. Well, let's look at the resulting bandwidth calculations. A figure I often see used for the gain bandwidth product for 741 is 1 megahertz, although I haven't actually found that on any particular data sheet. That's the number people seem to use. Anyway, if I divide that by our closed-loop gain of 100, I get a closed-loop bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. Now, humans can hear all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Well, I should say some humans that are a lot younger than I am can probably hear up to 20 kilohertz. Your actual hearing may vary. So if you're designing an audio system, say for music, that's a big chunk of the audio range that this isn't going to be able to capture. Now if we do the same calculation for the dual 741 case, we wind up with a corner frequency for each individual amplifier stage of 100 kilohertz. Now we can pull out our formula for the cascade and say that our 3 dB bandwidth is going to be 100 kilohertz, which is the bandwidth of one of the stages, times this square root of square root of 2 plus 1, which is around 0.6436. So that kind of architecture will give me a bandwidth of 64.36 kilohertz. I guess you could round that to 64 kilohertz. So that's going to cover the audio range and a whole lot more if you wanted. So you can extend this analysis beyond two amplifier stages to an arbitrary number of stages by just putting the number of stages in your square root here. So I should say it's not a square root anymore, it's an nth root. Now, at first glance, this formula might give you the impression that increasing the number of stages actually makes your bandwidth worse, because as you increase the root here, this nth root of 2 starts to approach 1 from above. And if this is approaching 1, it looks like this whole thing is approaching 0. But remember that as you're adding stages, the gain of each individual stage drops, assuming you're trying to keep the total gain the same. So as the gain of each individual stage drops, the bandwidth of each individual stage goes up. So this all balances out. Now, the 3 dB bandwidth here 
can never exceed what you can get from the gain bandwidth product. There is no free lunch.